Welcome to the Miners post-game press conference presented by People's National Bank. Sign up for a Miners checking account at any one of their many locations. People's National Bank, proudly serving Southern Illinois for 100 years. Now, here's manager Mike Pinto. Uh, Augustine was probably the best he's been all year. Um, breaking ball was really exceptional. Off-speed stuff was really strong today. Um, and yeah, I'll tell you what, anytime you, you go through, what, seven shutout innings, you know, that's pretty darn good. You guys needed that. We really. Uh, you hadn't had a strong performance since last Sunday. We hadn't. We hadn't. Um, you know, we, we've gotten some good bullpen work this week, but uh, the rotation hadn't, it hadn't been great. I, I thought Kuzmal did a pretty good job last night, um, but not, you know, certainly not what, uh, what Augie gave us tonight. That, uh, you know, gives us a chance to win. You know, we talked about this last night. What do you need out of starter? Keep in the ball game, give us, give us a chance to win. Offense did good early. Um, yeah, we did early, and then we kind of laid back. I mean, um, we still, I mean, despite we got the five runs, we left the small village on the base pass. Um, but, yeah, but in the end, you know what? It was 5-4, and I still got a W, and, you know, what do we have, 11, 12 hits tonight? So, you know what? We're, we're swinging the bats a lot better now. Not too many teams have been able to get to Kyle right this season, just to talk about that. Um, you know what? We, um, we were fortunate tonight. Um, he's, he's really good at what he does, exceptional at what he does. And, um, you know, he gets ground balls, he gets outs, and uh, we got lucky to, to get him on a night where he wasn't quite as sharp. Just talking about that, uh, uh, McMurrin's been great for you all year, so yeah. this is just a little hiccup. You know what, right a little hiccup. I mean, it happens to every, every guy. Look at big league closers. They have a game when that happens, and, uh, you know, he'll still be out there again Tuesday, you know, with the game on the line again. So um, just, you know, it's just a bad night. You know, location was off. The, in the ninth inning, you know, uh, Sweet was set a foot off the plate on 0-2. And put the ball over the middle of the plate, and you know that's a good sign you're not on that night. You had to get Javier Brown out twice in the ninth inning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't like the way that all went down. Um, if, most importantly, because I'm going to get a pitcher hurt trying to th throw a pitch uh, in the middle, time out in the middle of his delivery. That's way too late, and it can't happen like that. What was the explanation you got on that? That he called time, and um, I said, well, then why was he swing? You know, hit the ball the ballpark then. Mm -hmm. You know, and he said, well, I called it late, and I said, yes, you called it late. So, how about an off day? You've worked what almost every day except for the rainout since uh, the All Star game. Off day, but you travel again. Yeah, well, we it, the schedule's um, a marathon. It really is. Uh, but we're t what we decided to do was because we had played an 11 a.m. game on Tuesday. We're uh, we're heading out of here tonight. We'll travel through the night. They'll have all day tomorrow to have off, and then uh, we'll get it on Tuesday against Lake Erie, who has been a very good ball club. They want to get in the night big, and um, so you know we've got our hands full this week because both Midwest and Lake Erie play good baseball. And uh, I was not a division opponent, but one with that whole playoff race there, another team you're kind of fighting for. So you don't really know them as much, but how's it going to be like? Going um, to big well, I hope to know more. I've got uh, some scouting information coming my way that hopefully will give us a little bit of a clue. I'm sure he's done the same thing. Um, but that's only as good as your guys' ability to execute. So uh, hopefully we'll have some information and, um, and can execute to get the job done. Dan Chuck had to get the best hitter in the league on the lap for the last out just to clinch a win, and it was close. And, and it was close. But, um, you know, Chuck uh, pitches with a lot of heart. He has uh, – um, he has cojones uh, <laughs> on the mound and, and really go, goes at the strike zone. He attacks the zone. He's not a, he's usually not a strikeout guy. He's a contact guy, but not usually strong contact. So, um, so that was an important one for us tonight to have Chuck be able to bear down and come in and help us out and you know pull uh, pull Jake out of it. Really compared to the rest of the league, you really had a lot of success against him this season. Is there any explanation for that? Against uh, Jason James. Um, I've seen him for a long time. We have a little bit of a plan, but. Like I said, it's only as good as do your guys execute it. And he's such a good hitter. Um, I mean, you're not going to get him out four times a night. You're not. You're just going to hope to limit the damage to a time when it, it doesn't matter as much. Millens was three for four. Do you feel like he's uh, just about as reliable as the guys in the right in the middle of your order? No doubt about it. Right Once we got him back into the, the leadoff spot, I think we put him in a really great position. Um, that's really where he's always hit. And, uh, and I took responsibility for it. I said, you know what? Early on, he hits a couple grand slams. I go, hey, well, here's our middle of the order guy. That's not what he is. And uh, he is what he is now up at the top of the order. So since we put him up there, I mean, my bet is he's probably hitting 350 since he's gone up to that spot. So we're just going to leave him there, let the middle guys do what the middle guys do, and have Tony in that spot. Tony's been really hot lately and, um, and driving the baseball. So, uh, I mean, I've got a lot of confidence in our lineup right now. I mean, we're, we're scoring runs and finding ways to get it done throughout the order. 
in the bottom part, you already get six hits tonight, just like you did last night. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Though. You know, one of the things that happened with the Holtern deal was that it spread the offense out. And that's what people were missing, that, well, one, hit, one good hitter for another good hitter. No, it was a middle-of-the-order hitter that allowed us to expand things, that the domino effect on the rest of the order. And it can be just as bad. You lose a three-hitter, and that has a domino effect the other way because you have guys trying to do what they can't do. Well, Locke has come through three hits for the last couple of games. Well, who has? I'm sorry. Locke, well, Locke yeah. He, um, you know what? He's, he's finding it. He's a rookie. It's going to take some time. And he's got to make some adjustments to his swing. And uh, there are times with two strikes, you don't swing. You hit the ball to the ballpark. You make an adjustment. And he's learning that stuff. Does it seem like Holdren, was he known as getting hit a lot? Or has he just been getting hit a lot um, since he's come here? I, I think the plan is to pitch him in. And the problem is, if guys don't have the ability to throw in and, um, and not hit a guy, then you probably shouldn't be calling there. Um, generally, that will get retribution between me and the catcher. Um, I've been known to drill some catchers who are getting my guys because they keep calling fastballs in. And you know what? Okay, no, you didn't throw the pitch, but you're the one calling it. And if your guy can't throw in there, you better not call it. I have a long memory, too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a big run for you tonight was, uh, I think it was on Roth's double, and no one was scoring for first, and that was a pretty aggressive play, but it worked out pretty well. It was, um, but again, that comes from watching the games the last couple of days. We knew what we had in the two arms that were involved, and, you know, that's, uh, you got to give Bart credit for that one, and because he was real aggressive, and, and we were sending him right away. Just how big of a Southern Illinois Miners fan are you? Hi, this is Bill Bond in the Seconds with People's National Bank. Show your love for the miners today by opening a Southern Illinois Miners checking account. It only takes $100 to open, and every time the miners win, you win too. That's right, every time the miners win a regular season or postseason game, your interest rate goes up. Stop by your local People's National Bank today to find out more.